Hi, everyone. This is Business Law One. My name's Jeremy Railton, and I'll be your instructor this semester. In this video, I'll give you a brief walkthrough about how the course is going to work. The first place you land here is announcements. Uh, there's nothing there now, but there will be by the time you log in, including this video. The next item in the menu over here to the left is the syllabus. If you click on that, it will bring up the course syllabus, which is incredibly important. It contains all the policies for this course, for this semester. Uh, so everything in here is very important. You'll see my contact information here, including a picture of me looking fantastic. Uh, you can see my office hours. If that changes, I'll let you know and I'll update the syllabus. Uh, I am in CET 216. If you find yourself on campus and want to drop by, give me a heads up so I'm not running around campus in a meeting or something. There's my campus email address. There's my office phone number. The textbook we're going to use is uh, Business Law. It's a Pearson textbook. We're using an e-text access card that you buy at the bookstore. You could also buy access or rent directly from Pearson. Uh, if you're looking for a co more cost-effective way, the balance, uh, or I guess the trade-off, is that you can't use financial aid dollars directly from Pearson. So if you're using financial aid, you want to buy from the bookstore. Um, here you go. You can actually rent the book six months of access for $8.50 a month, total of about $51 if you want to rent directly from Pearson. I think it's like, uh, I can't remember how much it is from the bookstore, like 80 bucks or something like that. Um, scrolling on down. The attendance policy is not something you have to worry about if you are meeting all the deadlines in the course schedule because you'll be doing it automatically. If you find yourself falling behind, you have to keep in mind that if you haven't participated for 21 consecutive days, campus policy is that I have to withdraw you. I don't want that to happen uh, if that's not what you intend. So keep in contact with me if you're having issues. I know life happens. A lot of you are working. You got kids, you know, got whatever going on. If you keep in contact with me, I'll be more likely to be able to help you. The last day to withdraw from the course is April 11th. Um, the way your grade is going to work is that half of your grade is written assignments, 30% is chapter quizzes, 10% is a midterm exam, 10% is the final exam. We're using a standard 10 point scale, 90 to 100 is an A, and so on. You can do late work in the class. There are a few caveats here. One is there is a penalty of 10 points per calendar day past the due date, and you can only do late work up to six days late. Beyond that, it becomes unavailable uh, and you can't do it anymore. So like I was saying, I know life happens and sometimes things, you know, you miss a due date whatever, for whatever reason. You don't have to give me that reason. Just log in and do it as quickly as you can to minimize that penalty. Um, ba -ba -ba, final exam will be online. The last important item in here that I'll mention is my AI policy. Uh, for this course, which is essentially that I don't allow AI use for this course. I give you plenty of information in the textbook, my notes, my videos, sources in the notes and assignment instructions. The way things will work here is that if somebody hands in an assignment and I think it's been written by AI, I'm just going to assign it a zero uh, and then prompt you to contact me. When you contact me, we can set up a meeting and discuss it. And if I feel like I made a mistake, you can, it's easy to convince me that you did it on your own. Um, I'll be able to tell when we talk about it. Um, and if I made a mistake, then we don't have any problem. So that's the way it works. So just keep in contact with me. That's it. Let's go back to the course. Next item in here is the course entry quiz. This is very easy. It'll only take you about five minutes, but it's incredibly important. You don't have to know anything. You just have to do it to register your entry into the course so you aren't dropped or withdrawn and then have to try to get back in the course and it becomes a whole thing. So take a minute now to just go ahead and do it. Pause the video. Go do it. It's very easy. It won't take very long, uh, but very important, like I said. In course information, you'll find the course schedule. This is going to detail all of the due dates, all of the assignments for the entire semester. So my recommendation, download this, add all these due dates to your personal calendar and whatever you're using so that um, you're not going to be surprised or just realize that you forgot a due date or something like that. You can see in the right-hand column, 
the due dates. And then, you know, in the previous ones, so the left-hand column is the reading assignment. Then you have quizzes and tests. Then you have written assignments and then due dates. We try to follow a general pattern. And that general pattern is that our due dates are on Tuesdays. Generally, I try to keep it consistent. When it's not on a Tuesday, I'm going to have it bolded with an asterisk letting you know, hey, this is different from our normal schedule. So just keep that in mind. Um, again, adding it to your personal calendar is one of the best ways to make sure you keep up with everything without accidentally missing a due date. In faculty info, you'll see my info here. This is really redundant from what we see in the syllabus. You can find my contact info either way. Now, we've done the course entry quiz. We reviewed the syllabus and the course schedule. We watched the video. Now we're ready to jump into the actual course content. If this is your first time using Blackboard, you might want to review some of these videos just to learn how to submit assignments, how to check your grades, stuff like that. Just, you know, some of you that might be your first time using Blackboard. Now let's launch into chapter one. The general structure will be the same for every chapter that we go through. You got learning objectives. You have a to-do list here. You'll find uh, lecture videos here. Some people prefer to have uh, somebody talk them through the content. Um, you can also download the PowerPoints here that you'll see in the video. Uh, in study materials, you'll find a host of practice quiz, flashcard, key terms, videos to reinforce some concepts from the chapter. Um, so that you have uh, a very good comfort level with the material that we're studying. Now that you're comfortable with that, you've done the reading, you've listened to the, you watched the video, you reviewed the PowerPoint, you're ready to jump in to the actual assignment. So you click on that assignment folder. Most chapters will have a quiz and some type of written assignment. Most, but not all, but most. So you can do that quiz, do the assignment and then once you're done you're done with chapter one so then you can go back to assignments and start into chapter two again very similar structure it should all be very easy to understand once you've done that first chapter in textbook information so if you buy the access card from the bookstore it's a little bit of a process to register it for the very first time so i'll give you detailed instructions on how to do that if you find yourself having an issue registering and accessing the book, let me know and I'll help you because you're going to need access to the book um, to be able to do a lot of the, well, pretty much all of the quizzes and assignments you're going to need to have access to the book. When it comes time to check your grades, of course, you'll find those in my grades. There's an email link here where you can email there. You can also just email me directly from your email client using my campus email address. I don't anticipate we'll be using Zoom, but in case I set up a Zoom meeting for the course, I'll post that there. Under learning support, uh, you'll just find a host of campus resources. Um, if you find yourself needing help with something or needing some resources beyond just what you find in the course. Uh, and then Thinking Storm is an online tutoring system. I don't think you'll need it for this course, but it's there if you do. And I think that's it, guys. Uh, I'm going to end this video now to try to keep it as short as humanly possible, but keep takeaways, do the course entry quiz, read the syllabus, look at the course schedule, and then keep in contact with me throughout the semester. If you are having issues or if you have questions or you want to talk about some course content or if you have thoughts on how the course could be better, I love talking to students. So have a great day. And let's have a great semester.